dream home and they start getting creepy letters and the letters were very Are they from back in the future or past no um the letters were very like accurate about what they were saying and it was weird because they could not catch who was doing this to them um <clears throat> he started talking about their children and stuff like that and they couldn't do anything like they called the police and the police, there was nothing the police could do. It was just somebody sending them letters, you know? It wasn't necessarily... Nothing threatening? It, it was kind of threatening. Well, the police could have done something. There was no name or address on the letters. They, you know, it was going through the mail. So there wasn't anybody they could arrest. You know what I mean? And no. to this day, what do you mean no? They couldn't... You need, when you mail a letter, you need to have postage, a return address... Uh, a name. I mean, you can do it without a name, but when you put it through the mail, it stamps it what city it came from. Oh, yeah, what city. I mean, the person literally said they were, like, watching their house. So, but we're going to dive into the story. Dive on in. Dive on in. Um, Let's see. So, what exactly is it about, though? Is it a ghost or a... No, it's no, it's not really paranormal at all. It's just a weird story. I've always been interested in this story because to this day they've never caught who did it. Um, Was there a murder? No, oh. that's the thing. It's just a lot of threatening letters, but weirdly accurate letters like about their children's blood in the house and stuff. Like really weird. weird. Yeah, and this case has always just. I've always wanted to know who it is. And once you think you know who it is, it's not. It's not. It's somebody, like, you'll think it's somebody totally different. So, because they went through a bunch of suspects, but they never had enough evidence to put it on anyone. So, we're going to get into this, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Are we diving on in? We're going to dive on in. One night in June of 2014... Derek Brodus had just finished an evening of painting at his new home in Westfield, New Jersey, when he went outside to check the mail. Derek and his wife, Maria, had closed on the six-bedroom house at 657, Damn. I know, right? 657 Boulevard three days earlier and were doing some renovations before they moved in. So there wasn't much in the mail except a few bills and a white card-shaped envelope. Boom, boom, boom. It was addressed in thick, clunky handwriting to the new owner. And top, there was a topped note inside, and it began pretty nice. It started, Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Now, for the Broduses, buying 657 Boulevard had fulfilled a dream. Maria was raised in Westfield, and the house was a few blocks from her childhood, her childhood home. Derek grew up working class in Maine and then moved his way up the ladder at an insurance company in Manhattan to become a senior vice president with a salary large enough to afford the six bedroom house, the $1.3 million house. Mm. And this is in 2014, too. Um, the Brodises had bought 657 Boulevard just after Derek celebrated his 40th birthday, and their three kids were already debating which of the house's fireplaces Santa Claus would use. So that kind of gives you an idea on how young the kids are. Yeah. Um, as Derek kept reading the letter from his new neighbor, it started to take a turn. How did you end up here, the writer asked. Did 657 Boulevard call to you with its force within? The letter went on. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. The that, author, huh? That's why I don't open the mail. 
Yeah, we just we just throw it away. <laughs> um, the <laughs> author, <laughs> the letter identified the Brodus's exactly, <laughs> Honda minivan, as well as the workers renovating the home. I see already that you have flooded 657 Boulevard with contractors so that you can destroy the house as it was supposed to be, the person wrote. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Bad move. You don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. Earlier in the week, Derek and Maria had gone to the house and chatted with their new neighbors while their children, who were 5, 8, and 10 years old, ran around the backyard with several kids from the neighborhood. The letter writers seemed to have noticed. You have children. I have seen them. So far, I think there are three, and I have counted. The anonymous correspondent wrote before asking if there were more on the way. Do you need to fill the house with this young blood I requested? It's better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family, or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. <laughs> oh. The envelope had no return address. Who am I, the person wrote. There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive past 657 Boulevard each day. Do you think they live in 657 Boulevard? <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe I am in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out at many of the window or look out any of many windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. The letter concluded with a suggestion that this message would not be the last. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. Followed by a signature typed in a cursive font, The Watcher. <laughs> 